to those who are listening again. It's good to have you. And today I have a very, very, very special guest who feels like a very long time friend. But wait, how long have we known each other? It smells like a year, a year now, two, I think. A year um, now, yeah. I met you in 2019, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so that's two yeah. years now. It's two years. But we don't really hang out like that. But... We, it feels like we've been friends for like over five years personally. So what's your yeah. name? What's your name? My name is um, Matthew Moses and I'm a youth pastor and I'm also a youth leader as well, yeah. Okay, so I want the guests to know a little bit how we met. Like I said, I, it feels like I've known Matthew for like years and he's just easy. I think it's just his personality. So it's easy to talk to him. Look at him grinning right now. He's just a fun, bubbly guy. And um, I like people like him because I can be reserved and shy, but it takes the right kind of personality to, to get the true me out straight away. And I feel like he did that. So how did we met, Matthew? <laughs> All right, this is going to be a little bit of a pickles, but mm. we actually met, like... I cringe. Well, I, was, I was my friend, like, his name is Eddie, but we're back there together and... We're trying to go to a club, basically. And mm. uh, back then, I was outside of God, in it? So, like, we went to the club. Obviously, we went we went to meet um, Benedict first, Mrs. Moses. Mm. Went to meet her first. And then we then all went to the club. And, you know, that's where we met, you know. Yeah. Did you know Bad you were party. meeting me? I didn't know you were going to be there. I was quite surprised because um, it was meant to be me and another friend. Like, like Matthew said, we were out there. We were young. Oh, oh, me was still young. That was like two years ago. Look at me, look at me saying it like we were, <laughs> we were still, we were still young. But like, it just feels like such a long time ago. And we're gonna get into why it feels like it was such a long time ago. But um, yeah. So I was basically meeting up with my cousin, and I was like, I was in a different mindset. I was like, I just want to go have fun. And I was meeting somebody who I had an entanglement with. <laughs> entanglement. I don't know. <laughs> And, and yeah, so I wasn't actually expecting Matthew. So when I saw you, I got nervous. Do you know why? Because I'm not good around yeah. people. Because I'm not good around new people. First of all, I was nervous for see, seeing the person that I was seeing for after a long time. And then I was like, oh, who's his friend? I don't, I didn't know you like that. I'm not good around people. And then the person I'm supposed to be with wasn't there. So yeah, that's how me and Matthew met. So we met at the train station heading to a club. But, and then the rest is shambles, which we will not get into details in. So we were both both basically in the world and out there. So the rest is just, is what it is. But recently, Matthew and my, my own life has changed so drastically. Um, so um, do you want to start or how has your, basically from how we met it's just like i'm seeing a different person in front of me i'm like whoa is that matthew like i was like wait is that matthew and even myself you know like anyway you go on matthew so you're a youth pastor so we were both yeah. out there and now matthew's a youth pastor mm -hmm. so um how did yeah. how did you get here let's let's start how did you get here from your situation where i met you like to be honest with you, is I've always been like um, a pastor's child. Like I've always been a PK, you know, mm -hmm. pastor's kid. But it just more looks like there's a difference between being a pastor's child and taking God seriously, your own self, and it. So it just more looks like at one point in my life, I just like you know what, like I just need to take God seriously because mm -hmm. obviously. At what I've point was that? Can I ask? Because this was this is 2019. Now it's 2020. It's like you're a different person. Yeah. So how did like what led you? And then maybe, yeah, what led you into that, like, change? Now, what really led me into cha into that change is, with, one, I've, I, I know I'm, I'm meant to be a man of God, one, two, I've received prophecies that I'm going to be a man of God. So it's just more or less, like, all that thing keep hitting into my head, like, mm. this is what you're meant to be, like, this is your way, this is where you're meant to be working as, this is who you are. You might do any other job, you might do any secular job, you might do this, but this is who you actually really are. So... I think like God wasn't giving me a rest like on that one. It was just like you just you just have to break out of where you are right now mm. and stuff like that and start doing what I have told you to do, you mm. know. And 
apart from that, I just wanted to like live another life whereby like everything was free, everything was okay. Like I, I was just done with that life of having to do things anyhow, kind of things. Because I'm, listen, I've been drinking and I'm talking about God. And on top of that, I had really short hair, and he thought we were lesbians. And then it was from that day that I realized I had to pattern my behavior because though the, the homeless man wasn't listening to anything I was saying, there was a lady sitting close by me after the homeless guy went. She was like, I heard what you were saying. It's like, it was really good that you're preaching to God and things like that. She was like, she gave me her contact details. She was like, oh, I do the same thing as all. Well. I talk about God. And then I felt so much shame because I was like, wow, I'm supposed to, I'm, I'm saying I'm a Christian. I'm supposed to be representing God, but I'm here drunk evangelizing. And that's when it started. I was like, I need to change my life. But it took longer than that. So, yeah, mm. continue. Well, to be honest, to be honest, yeah. <laughs> I feel like what happened there was that you were running away from God. God said that, but he's using my voice by fire. <laughs> Literally, I used to pray prayers like, like, not pray. I used to be like, oh, I just want to be a good person. God, leave me. Like, I'm just like, you know, just, you know, like, when you're a Christian, you can't live your life like other people live. You literally can't, especially when you have a calling on you. Mm. You cannot. I try so bad to be bad. I try, you know, I wanted to be that guy. I wanted to be like, oh, you know what? I'm going to be, what's it called? I don't even know what it's called. I was just like, I'm out there. I'm a, what's it called? A hot girl <coughs> summer. <laughs> I don't know what they call them. I was hot like, girl. I'm going to hot girl summer myself. Hot girl summer, you know? But, a, I'm a really nice girl, so I can't finesse guys like that. It's just not in me. And then I get emotionally involved, and I just can't deal with it. <laughs> so I can't. I'm in that respect. I love hard. So it, it, it's just, that life wasn't for me. God was just like, you're not, you're not this person. So stop forcing it. And yet, he literally had to break me where he stripped me with out of like everything I had, everything. And yeah. Yep. But I like. What you said is really true because um, even me myself at one point in my life like i was just praying to god there was a time in my life i was just praying to god that i just want to be a good person that was the prayer i was praying mm, that's I, was dangerous. Just, I, just, I just want to be a good person but why is, to... can you tell us why is that dangerous why is that so dangerous to just be a good person you know i don't lie i don't steal i don't do this why i just want to be a good person what's wrong with that it's, it's good to be a good person but that's where it starts from though you can just you can't just be a good person. The question is, if you're a good person, what are you being a good person for? What's also the reason the Bible, for you being a good... With me, the Bible says there is none good. So it's just like in all your efforts, anyway. You can't be. Oh, I've never lied before. You've lied. I've never stolen. Mm-hmm. You've done it once before. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. So like, yeah. To be honest, like being a good person is good, but at the end of the day. There's always something attached to being a good person. You're you're a good person. You want to be a good person. Why? Because of your destiny, of what God is calling you to. Because the only way you can be able to fulfill what God has called you to is to be a good person, right? It's a good to be someone good. So, to be honest with you, it's just more or less like God just God just has His own way of doing stuff. So, like I was saying, at one point in my life, I started praying that I want to be just a good person as well. I just I just want to be a good person. I always pray every single day, like. Like, God, I just want to be a good person and all of that. Was it like, oh, I and, want to be a good person, but I don't want nothing to do with you, God? Or was it because for me, that, it was like, for me, it the, was like, it was like, I want to be a good person, but I was running away from the calling that God has given to me. Mm. Fully knowing well that this is what God has called me into. You know? So. But I like to say, because mm. why I'm sticking on this good person thing, it's like, it's. The, there's, the Bible does tell us, because um, this is. This I'm a Christian, so I'm not gonna shy away from my opinions on this podcast. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. But um um The good person thing, it's just like that God hasn't called you to be good, he's called you to be greater than you know, and also he says there's none that is good daily. That's why we ask for forgiveness. Daily we're always sinning, always doing things. So for me, it wasn't, it was like, oh, for me, for saying, basically saying, oh, I want to be a good person. I was just basically saying, God, I don't want you telling me what to do with my life, but I still want your protection. That's it. So I wanted, yeah. I wanted to get the long end of, of the stick. I was like, God, I still want you to bless me. I still want you to give me, I want all the good things that come with being with you, but I don't want to sacrifice. I don't want to be yeah. reading my Bible. I don't want to be praying yeah. for hours. That's, that's what I meant. 
because it was like oh it's too much people make fun of me because i'm reading the bible people make fun of me because i'm not i got prayer meeting i'm not cool especially when you're like a young teenager in college nobody's doing that when everybody's like out there smoking weed and they look at people used to look at me like people actually used to tell me oh you're a different kind of person lit i used to hear it all the time and they used to annoy me but we're called to be different so Mm -hmm. now i'm recognizing it like i remember um there's a lady i used to work for in fashion and then she asked me to manage her social media account a part of the job that i was doing and i told her sorry i can't because i'm not doing social media right now i'm just trying to stay away from that that's distractions and she she literally looked at me she was like you're just different aren't you (laughs) and that's the first time i took it as a compliment whereas i used to take it as an insult but yeah yeah that's true yeah but like one thing i can pinpoint from what you just said is that god hasn't got us to just be basic like there's there's more fingers greater to that because it's all about fulfilling your purpose it's all about fulfilling fulfilling your destiny what god has actually called you to do to be honest with you so yeah like that's that's just what it is like uh, like and especially when you know that god has called you to be this and god has shown you god has told you you've gotten a prophecy mm. and what more do you want so it's everyone less like god will continue to push you and prick you until you like get involved or start doing what he's told you to do so that was say, my kind of story yeah so let's say okay so You've gotten the prophecy. God said you're supposed to be do this, uh, do this, and do that. So, what then do you do with the prophecy? Like, what do you do? Like, is there is there actions, or do you just wait for it to happen? It's built of both. It's both. It's fifty fifty in the sense of God has spoken that you're a prophet, or your man of God, or your pastor, or your teacher. What you then need to do is because there's something like the Holy Spirit said to me. He said there's a difference between God giving you a promise and you doing your own part. Not every promise that God has given to you or not everything that God has given to you, not everything, single thing is automatic. Mm. Yeah, you're going to be a prophet, good. But it's not automatic, don't get twisted. Prophecies are words, yeah? Some mm. of them come to pass whenever you, whether you like it or not. And some of them, you have to work for it too. If it's know? from God, it should come. Uh, I mean, actually, you know what? No, you keep going. Because that's another thing. Prophe- yeah. Prophecies are complicated because you can, you can like delay your prophecy and you can, I think you can actually miss it as well. I'm not too sure, but I believe you can miss it. Because if God has been telling you, this is what you're supposed to do, this is what you're supposed to do. And like, you're just too busy living your life anyhow. Then that's how a lot of great people have just wasted their lives away. That's or you catch it at the very end and you're like, ah, when I was young and I was fresh, I could have been doing this, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. so it's just one less like it's a bit of both you do your own part as in take god more seriously pray more study the word of god more spend more time with god let that desire and that hunger for you to spend time with god be there do listen when god calls you as a prophet but the moment you start taking god more seriously god starts to give you some little little tasks you, you will do mm-hmm. like little little tasks you will do for example you can just tell you okay i want you to, to be going on live on instagram to be preaching to people i want you to be going on live on facebook to be preaching to people or am i or i want you to be giving people um money on the streets i want you to be you know start up a charity start up a business that's going to be recruiting people and stuff like that like god will be giving like even me and myself like god gives me little tasks to do mm. and you know what's even crazy is that all the little tasks that god has given to you to do they are part of the they are part of the ministry that god has given to you mm. but you do not know that yet but what he's yeah. just doing is he's giving it to you little by little while because you can't because why the bible did says that it gives to us according to our ability right mm. because right now your ability is not in the state whereby you can be able to take a lot so what does it do it gives you bits and pieces 50 percent of it mm. just a little bit every single day you know what i'm saying so so what all those 50 percent is given to you in the long run it it it, it makes up to 1000 percent Mm. so that's what god starts to do for example now i'm god has told me to be going on instagram live and facebook live to be preaching the word you know to make not just a preach the word alone because the difference between preaching the word and making people understand the word my own is to make people understand what the bible is saying because a lot of people quote scriptures but they don't know they're just using it for the wrong reasons so god is saying can i want you it. to tell oh my them goodness oh i remember one time i'm not gonna say the person's name because i'm not out here to put up no preachers out there i was watching a, a youtube video of this very famous uh, preaching person and they were preaching preaching and then i was like oh what well, after one preaching i was like oh this, this person's on fire and then i watched the next video and then i watched the next video but then i remembered because during that time i was being um in my bible study it was just like don't just be um li- like you need to just don't yeah, just listen 
go just listen go out open your book and read because a lot of us what i used to be i used to be the listening because i'm like you know faith come by hearing but also understanding like you said and then Uh when i started to put that into practice so she was preaching something she opened the bible and she read this message and i've heard this message before the, the, the scripture so i'm like ah the way she the context she, she's putting it into is completely wrong i'm like huh so then i opened up my bible i read it i was like yeah that's what she says but then like um i was like no there's something not right so then i read the previous verse before and then i went forward and then i was like this lady is not preaching what this bible is saying she's completely yeah. twisted it and then i was like i was like oh wow so then i googled her and then i'm hearing you know like you know i feel like every preacher would be called a false person the confusion is there you don't know who's real who's not that's why you need the holy well, spirit because yeah. but anyway with her i guess that's that was the holy spirit advising me like uh be careful this one is she's a bit funny because she yeah. could, some messages could be real like um they'll mix in 50 50 so you, you're just there you don't know which is real which is not but i stopped listening to her after that because i was just like she took it completely off and i'm like if she can take this scripture and twist it so much like this she's leading people astray you know that's mm-hmm. why people we need to read the our bibles for ourselves when you don't understand something read the verse before read the next verse what does it say leave mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. move on come back i've heard so many people preach and i'm just so i'm so glad that god has given me the wisdom because i used to just hear and then sometimes as well i'll be like they'll be like oh some pastors will quote ah this says this, this if you actually open it you're like ah but it doesn't say this that bible verse is from somewhere else maybe it was a mistake or maybe they're just trying to add, uh, i don't like preachers i just throw random bible verses to seem intelligent mm. and it builds that trust issue with churches and things like that which yeah is, yeah yeah, I do. I do quote scriptures too, but what I do more times is that I'm at, I don't know the I don't know the verses, but I know what it says. Mm. So instead of me not to quote the verse, I know what verse. Okay, I can say Genesis, but if I say Genesis and this is what it says, you then need to now go. That's your own assignment to now go and say, okay, what verse in Genesis actually says this part? You know what I'm saying? Mm. Then you now read it for yourself. That's it. But like, yeah, um... but so it's just more or less like I. Like I'm not that kind of man of God that will quote something that's out of scripture and just for the sake of it. You know, if no, I'm not, not I'm sure, not yeah, you. you know, I wouldn't yeah. quote it. I was just saying like um, what you said about you help people understand it because a lot of us we sometimes just hear you don't even understand. Sometimes you mm-hmm. just you just listen to other people and it's just like ah. Oh. And then also I like that the Bible renews itself. You can listen to a message so many times, and then on yeah. the fifth time God gives you this message. And on the 77th time, he gives you a different message because it's constantly renewing itself, which is really nice and it's really beautiful. Because, yeah. 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 One, one, one thing I've always noticed is that is that the Bible is so div- is so dynamic and so diverse to the, to the point that one word from the Bible means a lot of things. Mm. Mm. And that's one thing that the, that the Holy Spirit made me to understand. So it's like the same Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 will say something different. The same Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 will also say something different. Now, it's the same God. No, not everyone. There are some people, the people that God is working with or God is working through, God speaks to them in different ways through different Bible verses and stuff like that. So sometimes in life, you see some, another person quoting the same Bible scripture, but taking it from another point of view and thinking, hmm, I never knew that came. That one is part of it. You know what I'm oh, saying? I but at the same time, some people just twist the whole thing for their yeah. own favor. So God has just said, you know what, go on Instagram live. Um, make people to and it was even on instagram left that god gave me a revelation of what he wanted me to do because mm-hmm. initially i was just doing whatever god told me to do but on an instagram live he told me this is what i've called you to do to make people understand to break it down to them make them understand what it truly means and apart from that it also gave me um another task whereby to host a praise and worship program every year um you know start with charity it's just building up, just building mm. up, building up, building up, building up, building up. Music school, clothing line, all of that. Everything is just, you know, everything is, when you see, everything is just like, it's breaking the different parts. But when you generate everything together, everything is for one goal, you know? So, like, there's kind of little things that God will just start giving yeah. to you. Like, yeah, he calls you as a man of God, all of that. But the time it's taking it seriously. But you can only get that 
if you take him seriously. That's why I'm saying that is your part. God has said his own thing. This is what God wants you to be. So is your part now to not take it seriously and I say, okay, fine, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna spend my time with God. I'm gonna read read my Bible. And then that's a, that's where you see that you start to becoming more of what God has called you to be. You start to yeah. see that the things that you couldn't be, do before, the miracles you couldn't do before you were able to do, you're prophesying to people and they're receiving it. You know, you're giving people prophecies. I know how many times that God has told me something about someone and I've told him and he's like, bang on. And then I shut to think, huh? Like, listen, That's another listen. thing. Yeah, I told, I told. Like explaining prophecies. I remember I was trying to, I was on the phone to my friend. She's Muslim, I believe. And yeah. I was trying to explain prophecies to her. With, and then I was like, I'm like, wait, if I was not a Christian and somebody tried to explain prophecies to me, I would be like, what kind of judge is this? Because I, I was like, I was like, oh, you know, sometimes we get messages and then she was like, because you know people might get prophecies twisted um with what's it called palm um, readers palm readers and all of this stuff yeah. so can you clarify that so i i could okay. I, well, I was well, like the, the, there's a difference between palm readers and um people that like a prophet now the difference between both of them is the holy spirit Amen. now the thing is that palm readers what you need to understand there's a different the, mm, thank you holy spirit as i'm even talking the holy spirit is blinking there this is how I love the Holy Spirit. Now, two words are involved. is a palm and a reader. So for the person to be able to or prophesy or quote mm. your life to you, they need to look at your hand first. Now, I'm not coming to look at your hand. I'm telling you, you, who you are, from what God has shown me. Now, sometimes in life, for God to be able to convince them that he's the one talking, or for example, you went to a Muslim and you're speaking to a Muslim, basically. For God to be able to convince that Muslim that is God speaking through you, it will take them to the past of their life. Mm. It takes them to their father's generation. This is who your father is. This is the name of your father. Imagine me just coming out of nowhere and telling you the name of your father. Yeah. You will be shocked. You'll be thinking, huh? But and I didn't say you bring your hand, you know. Yeah. I didn't say bring your palm. I just, I just said it. Because there's also like, um, not only just palm readers, there's also like psychics. And that, like you said, it's the difference is the Holy Spirit. So what spirit is, because some people do it, but by yeah. demons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, 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 that's the difference. It's yeah. the Holy Spirit. Yeah, so the that's difference the difference. between a palm reader and a person and then, of God is the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and then also like when it comes to prophecies, um, if it is from God, it will come to pass. If it's, it's not from, it will be tested first of all, and then also like um, you have to, it has to be tested first of all. God will have to, God will always confirm the prophecy as well. So if it's, it hasn't been confirmed, pray on it, pray on it, you know, because mm-hmm. <laughs> mate, demons are real. <laughs> and apart from that, people are fake. Um, they're, they're fake. something they call fake yeah. prophet and stuff oh, like yeah. that. But, and they prophesy about fake spirits as well. Speak yeah. Speak un- until when God speaks, and I don't say stuff until when God says, "This is what it is. This is how it is." I was some. You know, there was a day. Um, I'm not going to share this, but there was a day I told my dad. I, I told him that between three days, he says three days from now you're gonna receive money in your bank account. The next day, you actually did receive money in his bank account. Amen. Yeah. There was there was a lady. I came came back home one day, and the Lord said to me, "Pick up your phone and call somebody and ask her about the man that God actually told me who she's gonna get married to." Mm. And she confirmed it. She was like, "Yes, we are actually on a talking stage." And I was like, "Don't go nowhere because that's your that's your man." And she was very shocked. Like she was just like, "Huh?" Like, but yo. okay, like, I want to get into this one. So, yeah, what wisdom? needs to be applied in situations like that okay because i know these are sensitive topics and off very sensitive topics very yeah. sensitive so how did you did you tell her like because you know let's can you, can you imagine okay imagine you let's say let's say i don't even want to you you just go on because <laughs> it's very oh, sensitive yeah basically this is what happened i picked up the phone and i called her and we're speaking and I was like, have you heard, got a prophecy about who you're going to get married to? And she was like, no. And I was like, who do you think you're going to get married to? She was like, there's somebody I'm speaking to right now. It's my best friend. And I was mm-hmm. like, your best friend. And the best friend, I know the best friend because God has shown me the best friend. And I saw the best friend before. Mm. But they were not dating at that time. They were just came to my program. You know, I was just like, to come and help out. And I was just like, hmm, your best friend. And I was like, is he the Nigerian guy? She was like, yeah, like, and she was like, like, we're on a talking stage and then like that. And I was like, listen, God just said to me right now, that's your man. Because, and she knows me that I'm not a person that will just come and speak because I've never given out prophecy before. 
Mm. Now, for me to come first to come and give out that prophecy, and listen, prophecies always deals with two things. It deals with your past, it deals with your present, yeah? A prophecy that does, listen, prophecy sometimes does not go along with what you're going through right now. Sometimes the prophecy that you're, that you're receiving doesn't go along with what you're going through right now or what you're going to but go through right now. they're looking around like, hey, so I'm supposed to be this, but look, I'm like, so you shouldn't be yeah. looking at your current circumstances. Yeah, yeah. And prophecy also deals with what you're doing right now. So it deals with the past, it deals with the present. It deals with what you're going to do and it deals, and it deals with what you're doing now. So it's just like the past, the present, and the future. The past, the present, and the future. So that's what prophecy deals with. Now... The reason why that prophecy was accurate was because it goes along with what she's doing right now. So right now, like right now, this this is what she's doing right now. Like bang on what she's doing. Like this is not something like outside. So yeah, I just told her that she shouldn't rush it. God is going to tell them how to go about it and she, they shouldn't rush it and stuff like that. So it's a very sensitive topic for you to tell somebody that this oh, is Oh me, me, I'll never, never tell somebody anymore. Me, when, let's, because we spoke of... Um, <clears throat> of recording about these things very sensitive topic so for me i've learned now out of wisdom to just be like maybe not even i wouldn't even personally i would just be like pray about ask god to reveal it to you because then mm. people could you could say it's this person some people are like oh no him he's too short him no 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 he's too it's this cool. he's too you know some people can reject it also prophecies yeah. you can reject a prophecy you know you don't have to accept it and then one thing i've learned as well is that let's say um somebody told me it's like if you if you were prophesied on and that person got it incorrect if you've received it and you believed it and you've taken it in and you pray to god it yeah. by that faith it will happen you know what i mean yeah so yeah, yeah. it's just it's really it's really, it's really, it's really, it's really no, prophecy is a it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a big big one you know it's yeah. a broad one it's a sensitive because yeah. a lot of people have abused it as well and then i feel like sometimes god will also test you because prophecy is one thing that people can be very prideful of in do you know what i mean like you've oh yes i did well in this and then it's like oh you taking the glory god will put you in your place and god will also teach you this is Ooh, I've learned my I've learned that's that's true. Yeah, and that's the reason why God doesn't reveal every single thing. Yeah, that's, we know like in said, part, amen. God gives it to you small, 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 small. Yeah. You know, because he can't give you all the whole thing now. But me myself, there's some things in me that God is still dealing with that is that's why it's giving me small, 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 small. And I know, you know, yeah, it's certain things that God is dealing with me with. And that's the reason it's giving it small, small. So yeah. yeah, like prophecy is a very, very broad one because you can either miss it. If you're not sure of the put it once you trust in your spirit and you're not sure, pray on it first before you give it to the person. Pray but, on it and pray on it and pray on it and keep praying on it. And God gives you a confirmation because you don't wanna you don't wanna lead people away. But not only that. But there's a there's a time there's a time <clears> when by <throat> There's a time whereby the prophecy is so strong, like it's connected. You know, it's, it's, about it. it's, it's so strong, it connects your spirit like that. Like, it just, it just connects your spirit. Like, you can't hold it in, you know, you can't hold it in. Like, it's just gonna connect, connect your spirit. Then you speak to the person straight away. That, like, that one that God gave to me connected to my spirit straight away, and I gave it to her, you know. I guess it's the right timing I, as well. Like, um, anyway, I don't want to get too into because. <laughs> I'm still, I'll say, growing in all of this stuff. It's just really new. And um, that's okay. what I was saying. It's like um, um, the life that me and you used to live, it feels like such an old life because yeah. when you're new in Christ, he can, like, all the time that was lost, he can just, like, erase it, if that makes sense. And it mm -hmm. feels like, the, like, the life I'm living now, it feels like uh, I'm just like, ah, oh, if I wasn't wasting all that time, if I wasn't so stiff-necked, if I was just obedient, I could have had this life time ago. Do you know what I mean? True. So, also, like Matthew says, um, God will give you instructions and you just got to be obedient because it all ha what is yours is yours. Some prophecies, they will come to pass. No matter what anybody says, nothing nah, can... Sp yeah. Some prophecies, it will come to you, but it mm -hmm. depends on you. Like the children of Israel, it was mm -hmm. their promised land. They were supposed to receive it, but mm -hmm. they were going around and around and around. So that generation missed it. It doesn't mean that they did still didn't get it. Example example of a prophecy that will definitely happen whether you like it or not. It's a warning type of prophecy. Ooh, if yep. 
is a warning type of prophecy. For example, if God has told you that this woman is not your man, or this this woman is not your woman, or this person is not your husband or your wife, and God has told you that, listen, if you get married to this person, this and this is going to happen. This, listen, it's not about whether you like it or not. Even if you say, ah, oh, we're going to be together. I don't know if that thing is going to happen. That's a warning prophecy. That's a warning prophecy. Well, you might be together, and then right something happens, and then boom. What was about? It's, it's going to happen, you know. Once you get warning prophecies, don't try to think that like, I can change it. Who are you to say you can change it? You're going to change it. It's a warning prophecy. Don't go through that lane. Mm. You're going to get stuck. It's a one of prophecy, don't don't go through, you know. But at the end of the day, whatever prophecy you get, make sure you pray on it to your own self. And there should always be a confirmation. The uh, from uh, my experience, God will confirm things about three times personally. That's it. Especially if it's a warning. I used to have these dreams before I was saved, saved. I had a dream that the world was ending. I was in this building, you know, like 2012 kind of moment. I was in this building. And the first dream I had, I was with my cousin, who used 12. to like. He, oh, 2012, I was convinced the world was going to end. I don't know if you remember that. I was convinced until my sister, my, one of my sisters was like, Why are you scared? She says, Ah, don't you know if you die, you to live, um, to, to be absent from the bodies, to be present with Christ. When that hit, I was like, All that fear disappeared. I was like, Oh, yeah. But anyway, I wasn't living my life correct. And I was very young. 22, how old was I? I don't even know. I was young. Probably in the teens. Before 18, definitely. But I was really young. 22. What is that to you? I was really... You don't do. (laughs) I was really young. And then I had, like, this dream. And this dream was, like, the world was ending. I was in a building. The world was ending. And the buildings were collapsing before me and then it was like the next building and then my building would collapse and then we would die so then in the dream my cousin was like if you were to die today are you ready and i woke up and i was like i'm not ready because again we'll talk about all these things but put prophecy aside put oh i'm supposed to be a millionaire put i'm supposed to be uh, married at this age whatever put that aside the main goal is jesus is coming back that's what i think that's the i feel like preachers need to preach that a bit more you know so like i feel like if i go to church and you're not preaching that jesus is returning soon then i'm a bit like you know like your focus is a bit I guess I understand people have different uh, ministries, but what I like about the preachers that I listen to, that they, they preach, it, he could have a healing ministry, but he always says, one of the preachers that I listen to, Prophet Sammy David, he will preach about healing, all of this stuff, gives prophecies, but he always, he always, he always goes, but you, you know, despite all of these things, you need to be correct with God. You need to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and things like that. So in that dream, years ago, I don't know what year I had that dream, but years ago. 2012. It wasn't 2012, but I'm saying, it was, I think it was around that period. What are you doing? <laughs> it was around that period and I had that dream. And then I was just like, I woke up, I wasn't ready. And then I started going to church, blah, blah, blah. And then I was just like, ah, I just want to be a good person. This is too much work for me. This is too much. Like all of this, it was too much. I was just a lazy Christian, period. I confess. <laughs> I was a lazy Christian. I was a feel good Christian. And then I had a dream again. And then in that dream, I couldn't see his face, but I just knew it was Jesus. I just, you know, like how they portray Jesus in movies. I couldn't see his face though. So I can't tell you if it was black or white, but I could see his white robe and his garments. And he was next to me. And there was the same dream and the buildings were collapsing. And then Jesus was like, are you ready? And I was like, God, no, I'm not. And then I just knew that was a warning dream. Cause if you have a dream like that and you don't give your life to Christ, you because you everybody gets a chance to um everybody will get a chance to be saved. If you get a dream like that, if you had dreams like that and you just ignore it, and then let's say you die today and you weren't saved, that's it for you. You're going to hell. On, <laughs> but I was like, no. I you know what I told myself. I told myself I can't have that dream a third time. Cause if I have that dream a third time and I'm not saved, that's my final dream. Not my final. If I'm not saved after that dream and I have that dream a final time, that's like your last warning. I feel like God does things in three. I don't know why, mm-hmm. but He does things in three a lot, especially in my personal life. And I'm just like, well, when God tells me something once, tells me something twice, I'm like, oh, I better do it. Because if He tells me again, that will be the last time. And if I don't do it, then I've missed that opportunity. Let's say God's telling you you're supposed to be a footballer. You're supposed to go to that interview 
he tell you go to this interview you miss the first opportunity the opportunity comes again go to that interview if you don't do it by the third time that's it it's mm-hmm. gone so that's why I was just like, I need to, I told myself, I'm not having that dream a third time where God's asking me, are you ready? Because then I'm playing games. And then from then, it's been a real struggle, a real battle with my faith. And 2020 changed my whole life when it just took three days of fasting, Matthew. <laughs> it, I, I don't even think I was fasting. My full understanding of fasting was happening. I fasted for like three days because I was seeing some things and I was just like, my life shouldn't be like this. I was depressed. I was drinking low key. Nobody knew. I was basically a functioning alcoholic. I was just drinking because I just felt so sad and lonely. And I was used to, this is why I say people, prayer doesn't mean like going on your knees and praying like for five hours. A prayer could be a one word prayer, two word prayer. When I was in uni, my two word prayer was, um, or three word, Jesus help me. I always used to pray, God help me because I need you to get through uni. I can't do this by myself. And I got through it. And like during that time, 2020, I was just like, God, I can't be. I'm like, what am I doing with my life? I'm just here drinking. And I was in Bible study. Let's say I was drinking. I was in a room with people who were drinking, drinking. And then the next thing I was on the computer, they're like, wait, are you in Bible study? Because there was something in me. I was like, I can't. I was like, if I fall out, that's it. And I can't have that dream a third time. So if I walk away from the, if I leave God, that's it for me. If I die, that's it. So I was just like, I have to hold on to Christ. I was I just have to hold on to Christ. So I told myself, I'm going to live this life and I'm going to still seek God. And I know he's going to meet me somewhere because God says, come as you are, because he's going to change you. So, you know, for those of us, oh no, I need to fix my life first. I need to get married first. I need to do this first. I need to stop drinking. I need to stop doing this first. God says, come with all of those things and he will help you. And I'm an example. Literally, I was there in Bible study. They even know. I told my pastor afterwards. I was like, look, I was like, I used to be drunk, not drunk, tipsy, because God wouldn't let me get drunk. I'll be tipsy. So something was coming in, but people would be like, Benny, you're just drinking. Are you okay? What are you doing? And then they'll be like, Are you sure you're not drunk? And I'm like, No, I'm not drunk. And then I, I remember I fasted, and then the following week, my life changed it was just so incredible it just takes uh, six one one and to be honest with you that's that's like that happened because what you right. listen to god didn't it god said go on a three days fast yeah. my prayer which you did once you did that and things happened yeah imagine was... you, you've ignored that you know by now you're like still being in the same situation yeah you it know? was ha- it was amazing obedience just like you said obedience no. i don't even know how 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 my own even happened it's like, why? Well, if I say I know, like, I don't know. Yeah, well, I just know. Just like, like, I know exactly. I know the day. It's got the urge to just, to just break out of this, like. It happens like, over you know, years, though. It's not feeling, feeling uncomfortable when you're living that life. Like, yeah, you know, uncomfortable. Like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. You'll be doing certain this, things. God is like, you're not supposed to. This. You're not supposed to be doing this. I remember another example. I'm going to put myself out there. I don't care. We're not perfect. One day we are here. The next day we fall. The next day we're trying to get up again. or trying to stand up again. But, you know, down. falling is not the biggest part. Stay down while falling. Once you're falling, is the biggest part. You know, we fall. How long we, is the that you're not fornicating, you know. You know yeah. You're doing one thing or the other that it's not right. You know, you know. I think it's like day, no, mm. not getting comfortable with falling is is the most important part about the whole thing, you know. Because if you don't get comfortable with your falling, there's chances for there will always be chances for you to get back up again. Like mm. there will be chances for you to get back up again. There will be chances for you to make it right again. You know, that's why it's just saying. That's why it's saying. Like, are you ready? Because he wants you to be ready. It says I've given. I've given. For God to say, are you ready? Means. I've prepared a way and a grace and a chance for you to be ready. It's not as if, oh, like, are you ready as in, yeah, yeah, are you ready? Are you ready as in, are you ready? Like, I've prepared a way. I've sent my son to die for you. I've actually died for you, for you. You need to, to do your ready. part. You need to do your no. part. No. Uh, yeah, it's not easy. Like, you see things that you used to do before. Yeah, you still get tempted to do it, but at the end of the day, it's just more or less like not giving into it. What do you or think? if you're giving into it, stand up immediately as much, as quick as you can. Don't sleep in that place. Yeah. Don't lay in that place. I feel like as young Christians, or you said you're a preacher's kid, and I, I told you, uh, I thought I was raised in a Christian home. But anyway, but um, I feel like the biggest 
struggle with that is that you think that you you were born saved just because you're, you're let's say your dad's a pastor you mm-hmm, think mm-hmm. just because you were raised in a christian home it doesn't mean that you are saved you yourself you have to be saved just because your parents are saved it doesn't mean then you are saved and i think that was mm-hmm. and then also like the because because you were in that protected bubble you were always going in church blah 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 there's also the the lie that oh my goodness i haven't experienced anything and that was me i used to tell myself i haven't experienced anything i I used to tell myself oh well my testimony is a bit boring but finding out a bit further along i was like wait my testimony has been great from the beginning from Mm -hmm. my from the way i was even born it's a big testimony but yeah. because I didn't know that information, I just used to think, oh, I'm this perfect little Christian girl. I need to be a bit bad and then I'll be good. And it's such a lie. <laughs> it's such a lie. And then I'm just like, if I'm honest, I'm like, if I could re- undo everything, actually, I wouldn't. I'm not going to, because it's made me who I am today. But if I didn't have to go through the struggle, then I wouldn't. Yeah. That's true, though. That's true. That's true. But we're only humans and mm-hmm. things don't work like that. But um, yeah. this has been part one of this podcast. Thank you for everybody who has listened till the end. We might have a second part, or definitely will. Matthew will be back again, but it's late here. We we have some technical difficulties, <laughs> so um, I'm going to link our Instagrams. I'm not on Instagram, but I'm going to link my Instagram anyway because the account is still open, so you guys can follow me and see my old stuff. And then I'm going to link Matthew's page. And if you guys could see him, if, if I just put you out there, what's this? Put your fan. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll insert an image of what he's doing right now. <laughs> but uh, thank you for watching us. Well, staying alive, mate. Staying alive, mate. And we'll speak to you guys soon. Bye. Mm.